I come back to the Rabbit Chess YouTube channel. Today, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful floor length cape dress. Okay, it has a cape, and the cape is sewn into the underbust at the front area, like this, while it is left freely at the back. So, this is what the cape looks like at the back. You can see that the back is very low, while the front is the high part. So, it is very simple. This is what you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. To make this dress, you need your basic body measurements like this. So any the length that you desire. So I'm making a full length dress. So this is my measurement. This is my armhole, eight inches. This is like my underbust, just a bit above the underbust. You can place it on the underbust for a busty person. So this is around 14 and a half for me. You can also cut it on the waistline. So I'll be cutting this for just the front bodies. I'll leave the back bodies just like that. This is the hip measurement, 24 and a half, and then down to the full length measurement. So I took my second first measurement also. I had the right allowances, then I shaped it. So for the neckline, for the front neckline, I'm going with a V neckline. And the measurement I'm working with is around seven and a half inches. And then for the back bodies, I'm just going to go down by one or one and a half inches on the regular neckline. And the neck width I'm working with is three inches. You can do more than that if that is what you want. So, okay, now I've shaped my front neckline. Like I said, it's a V-shaped neckline. And then I'm cutting it out like this. And then for the back, the back is just a regular neckline. I'm working with a chiffon fabric, so it's kind of shifting. Decide to do crepe for a more stabilized fabric if you are doing it for as a beginner. So for the back, I'm going to shape it using like one or one and a half inches, and then I'm going to connect it like this. Okay, so this is the back neckline, this is the front, which is the V. And like I said, I'll be breaking it here around the waist area for the front bodies only. So I'll cut it out and to do this, I'm just going to raise up my front a bit, making sure that I don't hide my back. And it's easy for me because this is the back with the zipper allowance. So let's say you are working with a stretchy fabric. You don't need a zipper allowance. In fact, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'll be adding a zipper to this because this fabric is a bit stretchy and the neckline is quite wide. So if you're not going to be adding a zipper to this, you don't need a zipper allowance. Just cut it the regular way you're cutting it. But I may change my mind. That's why I decided to add this zipper allowance. But for now, I think I'll just be closing it. Then I'll cut, I'll raise up my front body and then cut it on the waistline here. So because of this cut here now, Remember, I'm still going to sew it back, so I just made sure that my front body is longer on the hemline by one inch. So there's a one inch difference from the front body and the back body, so that by the time I sew it with half half inch here, I'm not going to be having any shortage. So now I'm done with this, I'm just going to keep the lower half of the front body, then I'll take this to the sewing machine, I'll sew the zipper allowance close. Then after closing the zipper allowance, I'm going to join my front and back bodies together on the shoulder. Okay, so by the time I close the zipper allowance, I'll have something like this. Then I'm going to place this on each other and then I'm going to join it front and back on the shoulder. Then I'll bring it back to show us how we are going to be cutting the cape. Okay, so I've joined it together on the zipper area as you can see here and then I want her to sew it together on the shoulder so this is what I have this is the front and this is the half scale of the or this is the back sorry that is long and this is the half scale of the front body that is stopping around the waist area or wherever it is that you want to be your breaking point so now I have this the next thing now is for me to cut out my cape and to cut out this cape I'm just going to be holding this on fold together you can hold it with a pin so that it doesn't shift so what you are trying to do now is to make sure that you align them together the two sides of the back 
at the two sides of the front and then I'm going to bring my excess my remaining fabric that I'm going, uh, that I'm going to be using to cut out this this cape so this cape now you can cut it on a pattern first before you cut it on your fabric or you can cut it directly on your fabric I'll be cutting this directly on my fabric and So before I cut that on the cape, I cut out the cape, I just want to show us something. So if you look at this picture very well, this is like the thing we are trying to replicate. I check the underbust area. It is not as straight as this. Okay, I forgot to mention that before I cut it out. So there is like a curve around the center front here, which is what I want to try to create now. So to create this curve, on the center front i'm just going to go half by one inch okay or how deep you want your cuff to be but one inch is fine for me so now after going up by one inch now i'm going to take the curved side of my ruler and then connect it with the curved line towards the edge like this excluding the same allowance so now i'm just going to connect like this and then this is going to form my curve line for me okay you can also use your free hand like i said this is a chiffon fabric and it keeps shifting so i'm just going to try to smoothen it out with my hand okay so this side is no longer straight now we have something curvy like this so to cut it out i'm going to bring in the second half of my front pattern so that it will be easy for me to sew it okay i should have done this before cutting it out but i forgot so now i'm going to cut it together but the good thing is i have enough allowance underneath so i'm not going to be having so much shortage like that so i'm going to place it on it now and then i'm going to trace it out This part is not compulsory, it's optional. If you like it straight, you can just leave it like that. I just want that slight curve effect that it has there. That's why I'm shaping it like this. So now you can see what I have here. It's no longer straight, straight. And then I place it like this so that it'll be easy for me to join them together when I'm done. So I'm just going to keep this aside now. Then bring the fabric that I'm going to use to cut out my cape okay so now for the cape i put my fabric on fold like this this is the fabric and this is the fold point that i've been put on fold now i'm going to bring in my main bodies and the fold point part of the fabric is where i'll be putting my neckline okay so this is the fourth point. I'll be putting the front part on it like this. I hope you can see this. I'll arrange it center front to the fold point like this. You can hold it with a pin so that it doesn't shift. If the fabric you're working with is a shaky fabric like this. So I have the front part set now. Now I'm going to go over to the back part also and then arrange it well. So when you're arranging the back part, because I said I'm not going to be putting a... So for the back part, now when you're placing it, you make sure that your zipper allowance is outside like this. So you start placing it from where you sew in your zipper allowance because there is no zipper in this. So assuming you are going to be adding the zipper to this now, you include that part to it. So you just straighten it out now and then arrange it well like this. So after arranging it, you start taking your measurements for your cape. So I'm going to be starting from the back part like this and then I'll start taking measurements from this back neckline area. So now to take your measurements, you need to know the length of the back part. That's where you want your cape to stop. So for this tutorial, I think I'll be stopping around 26 inches. So now I'll just shift this a bit. And then from my neckline, I'm going to measure 26 inches like this. 
you can measure more if you want it more than this so now you can just place this upwards like this and mark the 22 26 inches then from there you keep marking 22 26 inches and then you're going to be reducing it bit by bit as you go on so now here i have 26 inches here up to here also i'm going to mark it but from here i'll start marking it 25 24 and so on okay so like i was explaining for the cape after placing it on your fabric like this after placing the main fabric on the cape part you're just going to measure it from the neckline here you determine how long you want it to be on the back bodies let me just shift it so let's say i'm working with 26 inches now i'll note it i'll mark the 26 inches and then from where my main body stop here i'll also mark 26 inches like this so i have 26 inches here so from here i'll start reducing it so here I have around 25 inches as you can see. Here I have 23 and a half. Here I have 22. And then on the shoulder part here I have around 20 inches. So for the front part now, from my neckline here, I'll, I'll shape what I have in the front here. Then I'll measure it. I have around 12 inches. So from here I'll also start increasing it a bit to meet up with the 20 inches I have here. So here I have 14 and a half, here I have 15 and a half, here I have 16 and a half, 17 and a half, up to where I have my 20 inches. Then I'm going to connect it together and shape it out. So I'll try to explain it with maybe a plain fabric so that we can see it better. Okay, so I'm trying to explain this to us on a contrasting fabric so that we can see what I'm doing. For your cape, you put your fabric on fold and this is the fold point facing me here so after placing it on fold like this you bring in your basic bodies that's your front and back bodies that you've joined together on the shoulder like this you fold it into two this is the center front for this front part and this is the center back also so on this fold point now i'll align my center front together with it here and then i'll let it take the shape of my new waistline in the front and then for the back bodies also here I'll make sure that I shift my zipper allowance forward like this because I'm not adding zipper to this before I place my center back on this fold point here. So now you align it like this to have something like this. So after aligning it, you start taking measurements for your cape. So to start taking measurements for my cape, I need to note how long I want my cape to be on the back, but on the back panel. You can measure that on your client. So let's say I'm working with 26 inches like I explained earlier. From my neck point here, I'll place my tape through and then I'm going to measure the 26 inches. So I'm just going to shift it a bit so that we'll see it clearly. So from this neck point here now, I measure 26 inches downwards like this. Okay, so now this is my 26 inches. I'm just going to lift it up a bit then and then I'll move the 26 inches. So I'll keep marking the 26 inches to the point where I have my basic bodies here. That's the point where my basic body stops. So from this neck part here, I'll measure 26 inches up to here. So now from here now, I'll start reducing it. Okay, you can hold this with a pin. So from my neckline here, I'll measure 25 inches and then connect it to this. Then here, I'll measure 24 inches. Then I'll connect it like this too so i'll keep reducing it like that here i measure maybe 22 or 23 inches then i'll connect it and then i'll keep reducing it as i go so when i get to my shoulder part here here i'm going to be measuring 20 inches and then i'm going to connect my 20 inches to what i have here so now i'm done with the back part so I'll move over to the front now. I'll just shift it again. So now for the front part, like I said, my front body is going to maintain the shape that I have on the waist, which means I'm going to be following this shape here. Okay, so this is what I have for this place. Now, to continue my flare, I'll measure what I have here. So here I have 15 inches. Now here, I'm going to increase it a bit to 16 inches so that I can come here to meet the 20 inches that I have here. 
So these measurements that I'm taking is not compulsory. It depends on the shape that you want your cape to follow. So I have 16 inches there. Here I'm going to re increase it to 17 inches from my neckline. Sorry, from my neckline here I'm increasing it to 17 inches. And then from here I can even use my free hand to connect it to what I have on the back. So here now you can see that I have a complete cape. So this is what you'll be cutting out but i'll not be cutting this out because i just used this fabric to explain to us and i've cut it already on the fabric we are working with so i hope you understand it better now okay so before i go after cutting it out like this after cutting your shape out like that you come over to your neckline here and they are going to cut out the neckline that you have here also so i'm just tracing it with chalk because i'm not going to be cutting this out so you cut out this neckline here and then you can notch it here on the center back so when you are sewing it to your main body you will know this is center back so you can notch here on the center back and on the shoulder area so what i have explained so far is what we have here now on our main fabric and i've cut out my cape as you can see and then the shape for my front body is what i followed and then i cut this out also and then on my neckline area also i've also cut my v-shape for my front and this is my back neckline and then i notched the back neckline so the next thing i'm going to do now is to align this now and then sew my cape to it so what i'll be doing is place this like this to see how my cape is going to fit into this and then i'm going to arrange my cape in such a way that I'll have the front panel, that's the V part in front like this and then the back part will be like this, okay? So this is how my cape will be. So in order for me to turn it neatly, it means my cape, I'll be sewing it right side facing the right side like this. So from the front part now, I'll start pinning it together. Okay, so now I've pinned the front bodies, I'll just go over to the back remember i notched my center back i match it to the zipper allowance that i have here and then i'm going to pin it also so everything has to fall in line remember that i just placed it on it and used it to cut it out so now you can see i have it exactly the same way it should be so now i'll just take it to the sewing machine now and then sew around the neckline and then I'm going to notch it so that I can relax. So remember we have a V-shape there and the back neckline is also curved. So I'll take this to the sewing machine now to sew it. Then I'll bring it back so that we can continue and see what we have. So like I said, if you are working with a shaky fabric like I am doing, you need to work with pins a lot. So that it will not give your work too much stress. Once you pin it, it will help it to stay in place for you. So now I have my neckline like this. I'm just going to take it to the same machine now. And then I'm going to sew it around there. So I'm going to have to sew the neckline now. Then I'm going to notch it. So after notching it, you just turn it out to see what you have. Okay. So this is the back part of the dress. And this is the front. Okay, so now after that, you just turn it out to the right side. So when you turn it to the right side, this is what we have. Okay. Remember, our front is too short. It's just the basic front up to waistline. Our back is the long part. So this is the front. And this is the cape on it so now i'm just going to bring in the camera to show us what this looks like this looks like okay so there are some pleats around here depending on how many how how big you want your gathers to be you can cut this on pattern and do slash and spread but what i have here is fine for me so i'll just be pleating it around the imaginary dart area here you can see tiny tiny pleats here so which is what i'll be doing here 
so this cape i'm not going to let it enter into my seam allowance i have like two two inches seam allowance here so i'll start sewing it from the where the seam allowance is going to stop around here okay then i'm going to sew around here also so the excess that i have here is what i'm going to use to do my tiny tiny pleats here so i'll take this to the sewing machine now and run that pleat then we're going to join the half part of our front bodies so now you can see the small gathers that i had it i made sure that my cape did not enter into my seam allowance so the excess that i have from the seam allowance is what i gathered here at the center part so now the next thing to do now is just to bring in the lower part of the front bodies that i cut out earlier then i'm going to sew it back to my front bodies okay. like this so i take this to the same machine now and then i'm going to sew it right side facing the right side like this and then i'm going to sew it so that we can couple everything together okay so now i've gone ahead to sew it so what i just did is to place this right side facing right side and then i sew it here so this is what we have now the next thing to do now is just to sew this together to join it using my allowance on this side so from here now i'm going to shape the side and then our dress is ready so what you need to do now is to either pipe this armhole or you just weave it i'm going to be weaving the inside of this also and then the cape part you are going to be using a serger to serge it or use bias to turn it so that it will be neatly finished so now i'm going to take this to the machine now and shape the side then i'll take it to the mannequin so that we'll see what we have okay so this is what our dress looks like you can see that our cape stop right on the under bust at the front part and this is the small gathers that i ran here so if you want more gathers you can actually cut this on a pattern and then introduce the slash and spread method to produce more volume to it in fact even if you cut it on a pattern you can even do this cape here in an overlap form so you can decide to do it anyhow you want and this is her cape you can see that it stops at the before the seam allowance here okay and like i said the armhole you're just going to serge it so the cape doesn't affect your armhole so this is our armhole here you're just going to serge the armhole and then we have the cape low in high low in front but very very okay the front is high while the back is very very low so this is what our cape is looking like at the back and then you can see that it stops around the hip area so if you want it even longer than this you can just make it longer so this is what the cape is looking like at the back and we can see that it is short just from here remember we started reducing our measurement from here all the way to the shoulder area and then to the front so this is what the dress is looking like and i can see that this is really looking really beautiful so i hope i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial kindly give this video a like thumbs up comment and subscribe to our channel if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one bye